stand by me, gospel choir, alternate vows and very modern order of service, but they didn't have time to delete Bride's absent dad, everything you need to know about Harry and Meghan's wedding. Stand by me will be among the hymns in a modern order of service as Prince Harry ties the knot with Meghan Markle in today's long-awaited royal wedding. The plans for the ceremony at St. George's Chapel, Windsor, include modern wording of the marriage vows along with the hymn Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer which was played at Princess Diana's funeral. Diana's sister, Lady Jane Fellows, will also give a reading. Meghan will not promise to obey Prince Harry, in a contemporary version of the vows using modern language such as you rather than thee. The Duchess of Cambridge did not promise to obey Prince William in 2011, and neither did Harry's mother the Princess of Wales in 1981 when she married the Prince of Wales. In a nod to the transatlantic nature of the marriage, the most relevant Michael Curry, head of the Episcopal Church in the United States, will give the sermon. However the order of service was produced before it became clear that Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, would be unable to attend, and still mentions his name. There was not enough time to reprint the 600 copies of the 20-page A4 order of service. Although the ceremony in the Gothic surrounds of Windsor Castle's chapel is deeply religious, the service will use the words from the more up-to-date marriage service from Common Worship, 2000, which features modern language, such as you rather than the or thou. The prince and his American former actress bride will pledge themselves to one another for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part. In the declarations part of the service, they will also promise to love, comfort, honor, and protect one another and be faithful to one another for the rest of their lives. Kensington Palace said like any couple getting married, Prince Harry and Ms. Markle have taken a great deal of care in selecting all elements for their service. Orchestral selections include works by Johann Sebastian Bach, Edward Elgar, Gabriel Fauré, and Franz Schubert. In keeping with royal wedding tradition, the national anthem will be played at the end. It was announced yesterday that Prince Charles would take Mr. Markle's position and walk Meghan down the aisle, although she will enter the chapel by herself. Royal bride-to-be Meghan arrived with her mother to spend her final night before the wedding at Cliveden House Hotel after enjoying afternoon tea with the Queen. Beaming Meghan and mother Doria Ragland spent the night at the Berkshire Hotel with a group of Meghan's closest friends, her dress designer and hairdresser, before Doria accompanies the bride to St. George's Chapel as she finally ties the knot with Prince Harry. As she walked into the hotel Meghan, wearing a 1,350-pound navy roll and Murray Barwick dress, told waiting royal fans that she felt wonderful, thank you, Doria who wore a smart champagne color dress, walked in heels and appeared to have styled her hair into soft twists, flew in to support her daughter and the weak Meghan's father Thomas pulled out of the ceremony and Prince Charles stepped in to give the bride away. Ems Ragland, a yoga instructor and social worker from Los Angeles, enjoyed a traditional English tea at Windsor Castle, complete with jam sandwiches and sponge cake, as she prepared for her daughter's big day. Meanwhile, just a few miles away in Windsor Prince Harry and his brother William joked with crowds outside Windsor Castle. Their last public appearances before the royal wedding, Harry and William chatted with excited royal fans outside Windsor, shaking their hands and posing for pictures with the thousands of people who have been waiting for days for the marriage. The groom joked with one of the well-wishers that he was just trying to get to the pub, as some of the spectators who have been camping out at Windsor were rewarded with a glimpse of Prince Harry. Harry and William stayed the night at the luxurious Calworth Park in Sunningdale, Berkshire. The design of Meghan's dress may be kept secret until the moment she emerges in her gown on the way to the chapel. Prince Harry will wear a wedding ring after marrying Meghan Markle, something not all royal grooms have chosen to do. Wedding rings worn by royal brides are traditionally made from Welsh gold but very few men in the monarchy have chosen to put on a wedding band. Timings for the royal wedding 9 a.m. Members of the public who have been invited to watch the wedding day from the grounds of Windsor Castle begin to arrive. 9.30 a.m. 11 a.m. Wedding guests arrive at the castle's famous round tower by coach and enter the chapel through the south door and take their seats. 11.20 a.m. Members of the royal family begin to arrive and enter via the Galilee porch, some on foot and others by car. 11.40 a.m. Harry and best man the Duke of Cambridge arrive at the chapel's west door received by the Dean of Windsor. They will probably arrive on foot, walking past the thousands of spectators invited into the grounds of the castle. The moment will give Harry the chance to acknowledge the 200 representatives from charities he is associated with gathered in the horseshoe cloister at the bottom of the steps. 11.42 am, Ems Markle's mother Doria Ragland arrives at the Galilee porch and is received by the Dean of Windsor. 11.45 am, the Prince of Wales arrives at the Galilee porch. 11.52 am, following protocol. The Queen will be the last member of the royal family to arrive for the wedding service. 11.59 am, 
M's Markle arrives at the chapel's west steps by car, from her overnight accommodation at the Cliveden House Hotel in Taplow, Berkshire. M's Markle will walk through the nave on her own followed by her bridesmaids and page boys who include Princess Charlotte and Prince George, before being accompanied by Charles down the aisle of the choir. 12 p.m. Service begins. 1.00 p.m. Service ends and the newlyweds emerge at the west steps of the chapel. They will be waved off on their carriage procession through Windsor by members of both families. The congregation will file out of the chapel to see the married couple leave before heading to St. George's Hall for a lunchtime reception hosted by the Queen. 1.05 p.m. The carriage procession through the streets of Windsor possibly begins around this time, taking 25 minutes. 7 p.m. Bride and groom depart Windsor Castle for the evening reception at Frogmore House, hosted by the Prince of Wales. Prince Harry's father will take the unprecedented step of giving away his son's fiancée at St. George's Chapel, Windsor, as millions watch around the world. But as Mail Online revealed, Charles will meet her halfway into the chapel because Meghan had always planned to walk in by herself, without her father, and now, the Prince of Wales. The American-born former actress asked him after discussions with Harry and Charles said today he was pleased to welcome her to the royal family in this way. At the service the bride will walk through the nave and Prince Charles will be waiting at the start of the choir, halfway down the chapel, to take her to the altar. A source told Mail Online, it was something that she made clear she wanted to do when she and Prince Harry started planning their wedding last November. Many royal fans appear delighted at Meghan's decision because Charles does not have a daughter, but some critics believe the star, 36, should have plumped for Doria. The dramatic twist came as Prince Philip, 96, confirmed he will be well enough to attend the ceremony after successfully recovering from a hip operation last month. Harry's father is vastly more experienced than Doria at appearing at large-scale public events amid intense scrutiny. He also performed a duty for Alexandra Nichbal, the daughter of his close friend, Lord Brebourne. In 2016, her mother Doria Raglan had been expected to step in for Thomas Markle, whose deal with a paparazzi photographer threatened to overshadow the biggest and happiest day of his daughter's life. Mr. Markle was forced to pull out of performing the fatherly duty after undergoing heart surgery and a dramatic upset just two days before the wedding. Meghan will be driven from Windsor Castle to the chapel and enter at the famous West Door followed by her six bridesmaids and four page boys at around midday. Social media users praised the choice of Charles, with one saying, What a lovely thing. Charles himself has no biological daughters but he will definitely be gaining one tomorrow. It will be a very touching moment. Another from New South Wales, Australia, tweeted, What a wonderful blessing for them both. Something Charles thought he would never be able to do. Prince Harry remained tight lipped when asked if he was nervous ahead of his wedding to Meghan Markle, but assured well wishers he felt great. The prince greeted crowds on Castle Hill outside Windsor Castle with the Duke of Cambridge, just a short distance from St. George's Chapel where he will tie the knot with the American star. Royal wedding well-wishers erupted in applause and cheers when the brothers emerged through the gates of the castle on Friday evening. Harry was asked twice in quick succession if he was nervous, but did not answer. Shortly afterwards, when asked how he was feeling, he said, Great, thanks. How are you feeling? Meghan O'Shea, aged 7, from Holyport in Berkshire was among those who chatted with Harry. The prince noted the H in the little girl's name, like his soon-to-be wife Meghan, and she said he remarked, Is that like the one I'm going to marry? There's not very many Megans with a H around. Little Meghan said of her namesake, I think she's very nice. Snipers are on rooftops today with soldiers and armed police patrolling the streets below as a pound 30 million ring of steel today surrounds Windsor Castle ahead of the royal wedding. Police, the army and undercover members of the security services are ready to do whatever is necessary to prevent any attack on Harry and Meghan's big day, including shooting to kill. The 2.6-mile route the couple will travel from St. George's Chapel to Windsor Castle is lined with sharpshooters on top of buildings and other vantage points. Specialist teams are also patrolling the Thames. Police and soldiers carrying automatic weapons will also line the streets ready to fire if necessary and are already patrolling the roads, which have crash barriers used to stop vehicle-based terror attacks. With the UK's terror threat level as severe the cost of security for the first major royal wedding since 2011 is expected to reach up to pound 30 million and the bill will be picked up by the taxpayer. It is Thames Valley Police's biggest ever operation and they are relying heavily on Scotland Yard and MI5 for support. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry spent the night before their wedding at separate luxury hotels close to Windsor Castle, in rooms costing up to £1,500 a night. Prince Harry stayed at the luxurious Calworth Park in Sunningdale, Berkshire, on Friday, which is owned by the Sultan of Brunei's Dorchester Hotel Group. The venue is a 15-minute drive from St. George's Chapel and Prince William is also staying the night to support his brother, Kensington Palace has said. The Duke and Prince play regularly on Calworth Park's world-class polo grounds, which are managed by Guards Polo Club, and last year Meghan watched her then-boyfriend play on the pitch. Meghan stayed at Cliveden House Hotel 
on the National Trust's Cliveden estate, with her mother Doria, where rooms including the aptly named Prince of Wales suite can cost £1,500 a night. Cliveden famously hosted the 1961 summer party where John Profumo would meet Christine Keeler and launch the affair that almost destroyed Harold Macmillan's Tory government. The stunning 15th-century Gothic St. George's Chapel is set in the lower ward of the Queen's beloved Windsor Castle. Steeped in history, it offers Prince Harry and Meghan Markle a slightly more intimate venue for their wedding, but one that is still appropriately grand. It usually holds around 800 guests, compared with the 2000 capacity of Westminster Abbey, where the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge married in 2011. With the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh in their 90s, the choice will be especially convenient for Harry's grandparents, who spend a great deal of time at home in the castle. Located within the castle's grounds and surrounded by the Horseshoe Cloisters and the Henry VIII Gate, the venue will also provide the royal family with a certain amount of privacy on the day of the wedding. Harry was also christened in the chapel in December 1984, when he was three months old, which, according to Church of England rules, means he can also marry there. The Prince and Ems Markle's reception will be held in the castle's 180 feet, 55 meters, long St. George's Hall, traditionally used for glittering state banquets. The vast hall had to be restored following the devastating fire at the castle in 1992.